Oh, I'm good. What have you been up to lately? <laughs> nice. Do you have any jeans in there by any chance? I actually do. Oh my gosh, yay. I have a project that I want to do with those. Hey mom, do you have any jeans that you don't wear? Hey dad, do you have any jeans that you don't wear? Julian, where are your jeans? Oh, there we go. What a good time to clean out the closet. I don't think I've seen you wear these. Do you still wear these? Yes. Do you wear these? No. These? No. Do you wear these? No, 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 no. Well, it looks like my jeans mission was successful. Tons of friends and family dropped them off. They didn't want to wear them anymore. They were at the back of their closets. They had rips in them. So I'm gonna transform them into one a fashion wrap skirt. So they don't even have to be your size. You can take any pair of jeans that are size larger than you and make it a cool wrap skirt. And then I'm going to make a home decor DIY and take little bits and pieces with the pockets and make them an organizational tool in my studio, put all my sewing supplies in them. Fashion and function. So I need to get cutting these up. The first step is to wash your pair of jeans. Then using a pair of sharp fabric scissors, cut the inseam of your jeans just to the side of the seam with the top stitching. Cut up the entire inseam from hem to hem, passing over the crotch point. Now that the inseams are apart, just on the front of the jeans, cut up the crotch seam, continuing up and through the waistband. On that underside, cut off the piece of the waistband with the button and set it aside. Using a stitch ripper, stitch rip the zipper from the jeans. Cut to remove the zipper from the waistband. Be really careful not to cut a hole in the front of your jeans. Now, the zipper and the fly are completely removed. On the back of your jeans, cut up the crotch seam to the side of the seam just till about the end of the curve. Now grab those pins and we're going to lay it all flat and pin it all together. Starting at the back, overlap those cut edges until it lies nice and flat. Pin in place. For this area down here, you could actually just cut a chunk of the hem off of your jeans and just pin right over top. I'm leaving the seam here because I like the piece together look. You can also use your fingernail or scissors to fray the edges for a distressed look as well. Or you can even turn the edges under press and top stitch if you want a finished look. Once everything is laying nice and flat on the back, you can use some pins on the wrong side to keep those flapping edges from laying down. We will be trimming them off after sewing. I just like to leave them on just in case. On the front, pin that little piece of waistband with the button inside the pocket of the jeans just as a placeholder until we can actually try it on and so you don't lose it. The jeans will wrap over like so, and you will already have the buttonhole and button. Before we sew the front, we need to try it on and stitch the back. So I'm gonna sew all of these edges down in place. I just dug through all my thread to find a matching color to my top stitching. And if you don't have top stitching thread, that's totally okay. This denim is pretty lightweight. So now I'm just gonna wind that bobbin. Ta-da! So we have my jeans needle installed. I'm just gonna start stitching at this hem. Hard off my sewing machine, here's my top stitching. And I just had fun, I did a double here, and I just did single there. And again, I like that distressed kind of patch look. I'm just gonna distress my edges, being careful not to cut a hole. But you could totally have flipped these under and top stitched them down in place. So now, while my scissors are still in my hand, I'm going to flip this over 
And I am just going to cut away this excess fabric. Not too close to my seams, but close enough. So just cutting away that excess. So here's the fun part. I have this skirt on and I wrapped it around my body and we're gonna determine the location for our button. And with that allowance, I just poke it inside the, um, the pocket and I'm gonna position it where this kind of crosses over my body to a comfortable location. So it can be all the way over here or in here, or you can even if you uh, have not as much of a wrap, you can even position it here because I haven't stitched down this part yet because I need to determine the wrap location before I do that. So I like, let's try this location. So I'm going to pin that like so. I'm going to wrap and pin. And I also pin the top of the tab too on either side because we'll stitch it in both locations. So that looks like a good wrap location. Give it a spin. Loving this look so far. That nice little wrap style. So while I have it on, I'm actually going to pin this point right here. Being careful not to pin my skin because now we're gonna top stitch this down in place and also fill in that gap right here or you can leave it open if you're comfortable with that length. So I'm going to make sure everything is good to go. It's nice and wrapped. I'm going to stitch everything in place, including the tab and my skirt. All right, never mind. While I was in my studio, I found some pockets that I stitch ripped from some of my old pair of jeans, and I think that looks awesome to kind of go with that patchy, distressed, upcycled look. I'm just gonna pin this pocket into place. I'm gonna angle it to fill in this blank space because we have this wrap style dominating kind of the overlap. So I just wanna add a little extra detail. I love the contrast denim look. So I am just gonna pin this and while I'm top stitching everything else, I'm gonna top stitch this in place too. Now this is a cool skirt. So once you try on your skirt and determine your button location and do all of your pinning, just lay it flat once again and you can straighten out your button in its general location and just pin it in place more securely. You can never use too many pins. Make sure the front area is nice and flat and do any repinning. Add any additional pins as needed to make it easier to sew. Also mark with the pin the button location when it's closed on your button to where the waistband hits. We'll be inserting a snap here later. Make sure that the additional pocket is laying nice and flat again and pin it down. You can also even add more pockets to the back of your wrap skirt. I'm actually gonna add another one to just balance out the one from the front. You can add as many extra pockets and details as you want. I'm just gonna overlap my pockets here for a cool layered look. Now I'm gonna take this to my machine and top stitch my button tab, my pockets, and my front opening just to the bottom of my zipper so I can actually get in and out of the skirt. I'm also going to finish just with a zigzag stitch this edge right here. Off to the sewing machine. My skirt is hot off the machine and I did go back and do bar tacks on the pocket corners as well as this opening seam because these are the points of stress because I'll put my hand in this pocket and this will open, open and close and I also did a bar tack here. You can see on my back as well. So I'm loving how this skirt is looking and at this point, you can try it on one more time. Just go like this to establish the hem point. 
Now I already tried mine on and um, I'm just gonna trim this a little bit here. And the point where it was a comfortable length was about here. And you can even do an asymmetrical hem, you can do straight. And if this slit is high, uh, is too high, you will need to go ahead and do an inset like the back. But when I tried mine on, it was, it wasn't too high. So I can actually leave this open, but still hem it. So I have a little slit in the front. So what I'm going to do is actually just lay my skirt flat and I'm going to leave a raw hem. I'm going to fray my hem edges. So I just want to make sure it's laying nice and flat and I'm going to put my ruler, just chop it off. So once you cut off your hem, I'm gonna go back and secure these stitching edges so I don't want them to come up. So I'm gonna do a bar tack there, a bar tack there. I'm gonna go to the side seams and flip them out and just secure those like so, just to make sure nothing's unraveling. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and try and just distress those edges a little bit, just to kind of fray them, because I want the edges to be nice and raw. So you can just run your scissors along the edge to create that frayed look. But if you want a finished look, just turn it to the wrong side and stitch in place. Lastly, so we have our button up here and this location here, I am going to hand sew a snap to keep this in place at the top when wearing the jean shorts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hand stitch that. I'm just whip stitching along each one of my snap, snap holes here. And once your snap is sewn in place, your skirt is done. So I'm gonna go try this on and see how I can style and wear it. I'm super excited. And I think I'm even gonna sew up a second one in a black denim because I love this style so much. still to make those home decor wall hangers. Pick up or find some various sized stretch canvases and wood frames from your local dollar or craft store. You can even use actual picture frames for a different look. Just be sure to get a mix so you have various sizes and styles. Now grab some jeans and we're gonna cut them out into squares with the pockets in them and then stretch them over the canvases. So let me start with this one. You'll want to have your frame ready and by your side so you know what size of piece to cut. You want to make sure you also have enough hanging over the edge so you can stretch it across the canvas. Cut your jeans with the pocket area centered on the frame. I'm actually going to try and fit two pockets on this one. Cut up the side seam so you just have one layer. And as long as you have some overhang on your canvas, you should be good. Be sure to prep all of your pieces before getting out that nail gun. I'll try a smaller one as well. It's really better to cut it too big at first and then you can trim it back after. So for the frame, you just wanna open it up and get rid of the glass and then cut whatever size fits to the backing. For the frame, you don't have to worry about having too much overhang. You can save other pockets that you cut for another one. Just make sure it's centered and use a rotary cutter to trim the edges. To hold it in place, you can use tape, 
spray adhesive, or fabric glue. Glue down any loose sides and trim away the overhang and then you can frame it. For the canvas ones, you just need to get a staple gun. If you don't have a staple gun, you can just totally do this method in various shapes and size and even colors of frame and arrange them. But I am going to use Julian's staple gun to wrap the other ones so I get kind of that wrapped around edge so you can see the denim from the side too to create my little organizational denim pocket uh, collage. Thank you. So, Let's get stapling. So I have my pieces of denim with the pocket and I have my frames and I'm just going to wrap, making sure I center it so I have enough. Okay, I'll start at the sides. You might wanna do a practice one first. There we go. Corners, I'm going to try and wrap like a present, like that. Oh, that looks so good. So that was fun. So now I'm gonna go ahead and probably with Julian's help, I'm going to wrap and staple the other ones. I'm really excited too about my big double one. So after I'm done stapling these, I think we're gonna try and see where we can hang them in my studio. So everything is in reach and I used a bunch of old jeans. So I hope you had fun learning how to sew a fashion skirt and home decor using old denim. <laughs>